Romans 11, and we will read the following verses where it seems like that you can lose your salvation. Verse 21, For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Okay, God's not going to spare you as a branch. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. So you can be cut off from salvation, it seems like. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. So these people, God seems to graft in and to replace you because you're cut off. Look at verse 24. For thou wert cut, off, uh, cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? So you see right here that it seems like that God can replace you with somebody else. Whoever the them is, these them can be grafted in. into the olive tree. So I'll just put branches right here. So we see right here that in these branches, I'm not going to draw leaves, OK? I'm just going to draw wood. <laughs> that way it'll be easier to see. These certain branches, the Lord can graft them in while this branch is cut off. So this, these branches can be cut off. Let's say these branches are referring to you. So you are cut off, and then whoever the them is, is replacing you. So it seems like that when you are cut off, you lose your salvation. Why? Because you're not still within belief, still in the faith. If you're in unbelief, then you're cut off. So that's quite disturbing. It's dependent upon believing still. Otherwise, you're cut off. Well, the answer is this. We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. Dispensational shows that you have to divide groups of people and time periods in the verses. So here's the idea in dispensationalism. It's not talking about individual salvation. OK, you've got to rightly divide. This is talking about national salvation here. So let me give an explanation here through the drawing. So we got four, uh, there are four major time periods. Tribulation, the church age, which is behind the tribulation, and you got the millennium, which is 1,000 years. Before the church age, we went through a time period called the Old Testament. Now the thing is this, the group of people God dealt with were Jews, correct? The Jews were the ones that received the salvation. Salvation is of the Jews. What happened in the church age? The Gentiles were the ones who sought after God because they were the ones who believed on him, right? So because these Gentiles believed, that's why the Jews were done. Now, before I continue on, replacement theology teaches that the church replaces Israel. So Israel is done for. No, that's not true. Okay, it's temporary. Temporary. Because of Romans 11.25. But I'm not going to get going over there. I'm just going to simply talk about you. About if this is talking about you losing salvation. What happens then later on is that Jews, the nation of Israel, are restored. God turns them. And guess what? The Gentiles are cut off. And then the supreme nation is the Jews, not Gentiles. So you got to realize this. This is the idea of what's going on. What's going on is simply this. Ever since the Old Testament, was God attention on the Gentile nation or Jews? It was Jews, not the Gentiles. What happened in the church age? The Jewish nations kept rejecting God, see? So that's why God turned to the Gentile nations, because the Jews would not believe. So they are cut off temporarily. But guess what? Because today's Gentile nations don't believe 
they don't believe in the back of their coins in God we trust like they should. They think, who's the God? You know, it could be Allah. It could be uh, any other God that you worship, see? It's this new age, one world garbage, see? Because uh, look at Europe, Germany and uh, European nations. I mean, they're all headed toward hell. It's so dark over there. Look at different countries around the world, especially America. I mean, you just kick out the Ten Commandments and prayer, etc. I mean, look at our world, man. It's so messed up. That's why Gentiles during the tribulation, they're siding with who? The Antichrist. The whole world sides in with the Antichrist. See that? So they're cut off because they no longer believe. So then God turns back to who? The nation of Israel once more. And then guess what? In the millennium, the Gentile nations, they try to attack the Jews, but God reigns supreme over the Jews. God will rule over the world as a Messiah sets up his kingdom on the earth, and the Gentile nations, they have to seek after the Jews for their salvation during the millennium. So notice here, what is this? Is this talking about individual or nations? Nation. So this is a national salvation. This is not an individual salvation. You have to worry about, oh, I no longer believe in Jesus anymore, so I'm going to be cut off. No, it's your nation that's cut off. Your nation, I mean, look, I thank God for the privileges that the Lord blessed me with here in America. I don't uh, criticize the people and the people currently in our military and even, even those in office, even though there's a lot of corruption, who, uh, who provide us the opportunity and the privileges of America. Uh, a lot of Americans back in history sought after God, but guess what? If you're going to be honest, they don't believe in God anymore. So individually, Gene Kim, I'm still saved no matter what. I will never be cut off. But my nation, America, that I was born from, is cut off because they stopped believing in God. See, that's the idea of this verse. Because look at this. Look at verse 13. For I speak to you, period, or you Gentiles. Gentiles, see, it's, uh, it's a group of people. Nations. Contrasted with who? The Jews. Because look back at Romans chapter 11, verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath attained it, and the rest were blinded. See, that Israel nation was cut off. But then Paul was warning the Gentiles that, hey, be careful, even though Israel's cut off, it, Israel can be grafted in, ooh, thus replacement theology is false. See that? We already looked at the verse. Them, the Jews, can be grafted in, and Gentiles can be cut off. And guess what? Does it happen? Yes, it absolutely happens at the tribulation. All you have to do is look at Romans 11:25 and uh, Revelation chapter 7. It lists the 12 tribes of Israel. Romans 11:25 says, "All Israel shall be saved, the nation itself." You look at Zechariah chapter 14, and then you read all the other major prophets. The Bible says that God will rule in Jerusalem, Israel. They're the supreme nation. So this is referring to a national salvation, not individual salvation. Does an individual, now listen, this is going to be very powerful. Does an individual have to abide in belief to remain saved? Does he have to do that? What if later on in life you went through immense suffering or you went through something where you doubted God and then you quit your Christianity? You got out of believing in God. Are you still saved? Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And we'll look at chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. This one is out. It's not conditioned for an individual. Why? Because we're based off of 2 Timothy 2, 13. If you are in unbelief... So let me tell you something. If you believed in Jesus Christ for your salvation, that verse is, thou shalt be saved. Period. You're saved no matter what. Well, what if I don't believe anymore? What if I stop believing? You're still saved. You're still saved. Look at 2 Timothy 2.13. If we believe not, yet he what? Abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. That's a powerful eternal security verse, amen? Man, praise the Lord. 
One saved, always saved. You can't doubt your salvation. Even if you stop believing, 2 Timothy 2.13 says, you're still saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, eternally secure. Nothing can cut you off. So Romans chapter 11, there's no doubt, and these verses is national. Because look at Daniel 9, okay? Daniel 9. We'll close it here. We'll close our whole Bible study with this passage. Daniel 9. You've got to realize this. There has to be a distinction with national salvation and individual salvation. If you mash potato this and you're anti-dispensational saying, oh, there's no such thing as a national salvation or individual salvation. Stop dividing things. No, you have to believe in that. Because if you don't, then how are you going to explain Daniel 9? Look at Daniel 9. Verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Now, God is speaking to Daniel, right? So Daniel's people, the Jews. But this is definitely Jews because keep reading. And upon thy what? Holy city. See, that's definitely Jewish. Jerusalem, their holy city. So God gives a timeline 70 weeks long to this people for what? For their salvation. No. Yeah, keep reading. To finish the what? Transgression. And to make an end of sins. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. And to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Look at that. Let me ask you this. Does any individual take 70 weeks long to finish their sins? Uh, to get reconciliation for their sins? To gain everlasting righteousness? Is that, does it take anybody 70 weeks long to get such salvation, forgiveness of sins? No. Salvation is instantaneous by the blood of Jesus Christ. Boom, you're saved right then and there. Well, why is there this time frame? Because look, thy people, thy holy city, it's a nation. So that makes sense. Why did God put a time frame with Israel for their salvation? Because look at Israel's history. Look at today, from back then, and the future. Israel has always rejected their Messiah. One of the hardest people to, to convert is actually a Jew. They're one of the hardest people. So the nation of Israel, it's taking them a long time, a long time span, a clock. God calls his 70 weeks where they can fulfill their transgression, acknowledge finally salvation. Did we see that happening? No. But guess what? The Bible predicted Revelation 7, Romans 11, 25, that they will one day. So that's why there's a time span of 70 weeks. That's why, I don't know if you know this, but Daniel 9, 27. This is 70th week. The, Bi the Bible calls the tribulation. Tribulation is famously called Daniel's 70th week. Why? Because at the 70th week, that's when the Jews, boom, ding, they start to switch back. So there's no doubt, there, there has to be a national salvation here. This is not some kind of individual salvation. 